Hey, what's up? Think International, Think Media TV, helping you move further, faster in media. I'm here with Jesse Bryan and John Clem from Mars Hill Church, and they recently released a series of videos highlighting the various campuses of Mars Hill, and we were really impressed with what they did, and we wanted to come find out the process, pre-production, production, post-production, and distribution of how they got these videos done so that we could benefit and learn from that. So let's check it out. So in video production, you always start with pre-production before you do anything else. So what was the pre-production process of these particular videos? Well, with this series, it started with figuring out um, as we're growing and getting bigger and more and more campuses, you know, Albuquerque, Portland coming up, um, possibly the OC coming up. How do we have a campaign that kind of unites and, and gets people to feel like they're all on the same team is where it really started. You know, because with multi-campus, what can, can, can happen, unfortunately, is it becomes almost like high schools. We're like, hey, you know, we're, the, we're Ballard High School versus, you know, Seattle High School, whatever. It turns like a competitive thing, and we, go, we don't want that to happen. And um, we figured if we could figure out how to tell the stories of all the individual campuses, it'd make it easier for you to root for them. So you can know what's going on in Federal Way, New Mexico. You hear something good happens, and you're like, wow, that's great. I feel like I know them a little bit. And so that was kind of the idea that sparked it. And um, pre-production is really pretty simple for this one. We, we figure out what campus to shoot on that day. We have a week turnaround. So we would do the interview, use the interview, um, use the interview for the content, and then um, once we have a rough idea of how the interview went, we go, okay, well, he talked about this, 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 and this. Then we get our B-roll based on that and then cut it together. You know, because if we shoot that on a Monday, it's got to be able to roll on Sunday. So you got to, you just got to go for it. The biggest thing that threw the wrench in the gears for this series was we're a week delay um, production here. So we record a live sermon on Sunday in Ballard, and then that plays the following week at the campuses and goes online. And same with an intro video we do. For this series, the whole idea was to kind of bring everyone together on the same page. So we had to roll those videos simultaneously to all the campuses. So that normally, if we have a week turnaround, our deadline is like midnight on Saturday to get it to play on Sunday. Now it got pushed back to like Thursday morning just to be able to distribute it to all the campuses. So it was really more like a four day turnaround for a lot of these. And one of the things I guess in pre-production, thinking about the overall feeling of the pieces, we wanted to show the life of the campuses, a lot of movement. And well, you really got to do that with time lapse. I wanted to have moving time lapses and that was, you know, those rigs are just really expensive. I mean, you know, we're a church, we don't have we don't really have budgets, you know, for stuff. So we got to figure out, okay, if we want to do something a little unique and different, we got to figure out how to do it on the cheap and do it. And it has to be small so you can run and gun with it because, you know, I mean, we don't get permits or anything that you just shoot until the grill, grill style. So it has to be light and it has to be small and cheap. And um, it has to allow us to be flexible and um, kind of get in and get out, and which isn't easy for a time-lapse rig because it's kind of made for the opposite usually. Sure, yeah. Um, and so that was one of those things. And so as we're building the kit, we got to know we have to be able to go from handheld to lockdown shots to time lapses. And so that's kind of how we also figured out our camera package where it was one red, a set of primes to shoot the actual interview with when we have time. And then we switched to DSLR for the time lapses and the shots around town because we knew that we'd have to do run and gun and get in and out. We knew that we'd have the interview somewhat locked down and so we could actually lens up and switch things up for that. Um, but it, all bets are off once you leave the building, so we have to so have something we can move fast with. This this question obviously transcends these 10 videos, but would you speak a little bit to Mars Hill uh, Hill's branding when it comes to all of your media and obviously it was consistent in these videos in general? Um, you know, our, our branding comes out of our theology. Um, that's where we start with everything. So um, a lot of our stuff, I think you can you can categorize as you know masculine. Uh, we want to make sure that that guys can connect with it. Um, you know, once again, that comes out of our theology and who we believe Jesus was. Um, by masculine, I don't mean like you know like ultimate fighter beat people up. I mean like the kind of guy that you know takes care of his wife. You know, would go to his you know his little girl's ballet recital, but. He'll also, you know, change his own oil and, like, you know what I mean, yeah. um, type of thing. And so we want to make content that kind of resonates, and that's also the kind of content we like. So um, 
everything always starts out of the scriptures and out of theology and then moves out uh, a couple of other distinctives for us. We don't steal, st- we don't steal stuff. So we make um, all of our own audio and music. And if we can't make it, then we just would rather do a testimony video or something instead. I'd rather do something simple where we don't feel like we're ripping people off. Um, we don't like to borrow from culture. So you're never going to see a sermon series about Iron Man or any of that kind of garbage. Um, we believe that Jesus is relevant, so we don't have to make him relevant by adding something from culture. Sure. And because we believe he's relevant, we can just make stuff we like. So really the aesthetic, most of the aesthetic just comes out of stuff. You know, it's, I was just, you know, just lensing the, the room or just figuring out the shot. And it was like, it was just the right shot, you know, um, color grading stuff too. It's like, well, as we were, as we were shooting it, that's the, the clouds were just looking a ter- certain way. So it's like, well, let's just, you know, push that a few stops or whatever. Sure. Um, we don't, you know, watch like traffic and go, okay, we want it to look like traffic or we don't, that never really comes into the conversations. It's more of what suits the piece and the vibe of the piece. Um, and how can we best communicate visually what the pastor is trying to communicate on the screen to supplement that. Awesome. Uh, well, let's go to production. All right, so here we are at the production phase. What's up? Um, so really for production for us, it looked like having a, a quick rig, you know, like DSLRs. So it's 5Ds, 7Ds, things like that. Yep. And then we have, you know, our red set up for the interviews where we can actually take our time you know, and try to shoot it decently right with what we can. Yep. Um, usually it looks like one light if we're outside because we only have one day, daylight temperature light. Um, and if we're inside, we have a few more that we can throw up and um, put the stuff in the van and just go and see what happens. Like I said, you just, if you try to overthink it, I mean, you never know what's going to happen. It's better to just prepare as much as you can, get the right gear in the right place and be ready for anything. And we go, like I said, we go do the interview first. Um, based on how the interview goes, you figure out, okay, roughly, you know, it'll uh, get cut together with this is kind of their main themes. And then you go out and get B-roll to support that. And then um, get that back to the shop, get it up, you know, get it on the sand. Um, and then come in the next day, cut it, send it out. And you got, everybody's doing different stuff at once to try to get ready. Sweet. Sweet. So now you're going to explain uh, this, this rig you built, designed yourself, and uh, tell us about it. Yeah, totally. So we wanted to be able to do some motion time lapse work. Um, and, you know, the way to kind of cheat it is to just shoot a time lapse and then digitally move it. But if you want to actually change perspective as you're going, you actually have to push in and push out. So yep. the way we did that was um, we took a stepper motor here and attached it to a belt and a pulley down there. So, like, right now this thing's on. This this isn't really going anywhere because it's locked up. And then uh, my buddy Taylor and I um, took an Arduino, which is just a little mic- open source microcontroller, programmed some stuff onto there, runs out into the computer, which runs a little Perl script here. You can set all the parameters, and like I have it set up right now. So you see if I uh, start it up. And now it's doing a sequence that's move, shoot, move. Gotcha. So in between each of these movements, we have the intervalometer fire a shot. Now this is going a lot faster than we normally go. Yep. But we can set it up to say, you know, based on the way the clouds are moving, say, okay, we want it to time lapse from point A to point B over an hour. Type that into the computer. Come back an hour later. We got our moving time lapse. Easy. That's Easy. It's, it's, it's no no big deal. And actually, we um, we have a creative blog on the team, and I put up a post just kind of detailing how we set all this up. So if people actually were ambitious enough to want to do this. The, all the specs are there. What's the, what's the web address? Just creative.marshallchurch.org. Kaboom. So there are uh, lenses for the red for the interviews. Right. So when, whenever possible, we like to shoot on the red. It's a lot higher quality. And um, the sensor is really large for a video camera. And, uh, and one of the reasons we were able to do this is because to... To buy a RED at the time we bought them, they're more expensive now, but they were actually cheaper than a lot of the HD cameras that people were using for broadcast. And this will shoot four times the resolution of HD. Right. So uh, we shoot on uh, prime lenses and zooms. Um, here's an example of a prime. This is a 35 millimeter. So this would be like a good medium establishing lens. And uh, by comparison, the lens that we have on here, this is an 18 to 85 zoom. So you can see how much more weight that adds to the camera. You also, um, 
it's it's not going to be able to um, let as much light in just because of the nature of a zoom. So this is like a T 2.8. This will go down to like a 1.4. So um, when you're working in low light, a lot of times we don't have we have very little, if any, artificial light that we can throw on a scene. So being able to have really fast lenses is really crucial for Important. stuff like that. And if you can't afford lights, like if you're just you're running gun in something, if you can get a prime, whether it be on your DSLR um, or on a red or whatever else you're shooting on, you can just do a lot more stuff and you can shoot later. And that saves you a lot of time and money. We love red too because um, you can get a whole set of prime lenses for about the price of um, you know a zoom for an HD camera. So a whole set of five or six prime lenses is about 20000 which sure. sounds like a lot, but when you get into the high-end okay, glass, yeah. you know, that's cheaper than one lens with a lot of companies. Sure, yeah. So we get done shooting. Obviously, now we have some mixed formats because we're going to have the compact flash from the 5Ds, and then we also have the hard drives from the RED. And what so format does, does RED capture in? It, they shoot their own proprietary format, but it's an R3D. And uh, anytime you start and stop on a red, it creates all these proxy files. So like a low, a medium, a high, and a full res that you can... So if you're on your laptop, you can still open up that low res proxy, and it won't just tank your machine. And so you can see what you shot, check your focus, make sure you have what you need. But then when we get back in for post-production, there's a whole you know, complicated workflow to actually make that usable. Sure. Yeah. So we capture it on the cards, we capture it on the hard drives, and then we take it into post-production to edit it up. Yep. Let's go. 